Well, we can get it started, Janelle. Uh, first off, state tournament finalist, co-champion in your first year as head coach, final four appearance, and WNBA champion. How are you feeling? Not too bad for a first year. Not um, too bad. Excited, excited to be here. Uh, glad we had the run we did. Girls put in a great amount of work to uh, put us in a position to be successful. Mm -hmm. I'm just long for the ride. And we'll start kind of from the beginning. You know, I, I read up on you a little bit. You're a farm girl, Custer, Wisconsin. I'm a forest guy, grew up in the middle of absolutely nowhere. But <laughs> sports, you know, that's kind of all we had to do. You know, there really wasn't many neighbors around us. We just had to find our own fun, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it's kind of how it started with me. Um, me and my mom found a hoop at a garage sale, bought it for a dollar, went home, me and Pa put it on the side of the barn. And, you know, the next thing I know, I'm, I'm in love with uh, putting the ball in the hole. And it just became something. Uh, I never really thought it would take me as far as it has, but uh, I've definitely enjoyed the ride. Right, right. And then, you know, is that exactly where the love started? Just seeing that thing go down through the hoop, snap of the net one time? It was. You know, I think, uh, again, I didn't get out too much as a kid. We lived on the farm. Things were chores and whatnot. Um, that was more important than sports uh, at the moment. But uh, through the years, the love just grew. And once I, you know, once I found my niche in there, parents understood and had no complaints, me doing, you know, summer stuff or things as I got to sixth and seventh grade. And uh, yeah, like I said, the rest is history and just kind of developed and progressed from there. Mm -hmm. And then did you go to, you know, Stevens Point through elementary, through middle, through high school? Yep, I went to Bannock Elementary from third to sixth, uh, and then PJ Jacobs Junior High from seventh through ninth, and then Spash mm -hmm. 10 through 11. And uh, I, I played on the ninth grade team at PJ's. You know, I wasn't brought up, my level was not so high back then, I was good, but not great by any means. Big body, had a lot to learn. And uh, I think one thing that helped me, it was just kind of staying in my lane, not overthinking it, not overplaying, putting in work at the level I was at. And that's where the love, the love of the game happened and blossomed inside, which allowed me to want to put more work in and you know dive deeper and give more time to uh, my craft. Yeah, and then you, know, you kind of found yourself seeing minutes on the floor as a sophomore, uh, once you got to Spash. So kind of tell me, you know, what went into that? How did you get on the floor that fast, getting those kind of significant minutes? Truly don't know. Um, again, my play just kind of developed. Uh, I'm a very team forward, always have been team forward player. I love passing. I love getting more people involved. Uh, whether I score two or somebody else scores two, my thought is if I can get them involved, then I'm happy and they're happy, uh, which is obviously better than just one individual person trying to take over a game or just overshoot, things like that. So I was always trying to get the team involved. Um, and I think that's what made my entrance not a big deal. You know, upperclassmen weren't worried about it because again, I was a team player, not a selfish individual who just was a black hole on the inside. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna go grab my phone because I got uh, something to show you. What have so we go, here? Go on and take a look. Oh my heavens. She's a coach's Oh dream. my heavens. I didn't know there was game footage. She's tall and strong. Tall and strong. So this was your athlete of the week back in and 1999. This is crazy. <laughs> Janelle McCarvel is the Mac in the middle of athlete Smash's of the hot start. As a bench player, so you must uh, you were still not in the rotation fully at that time as a starter. Yeah, I don't even think I started to be honest. I don't know. It all blends together, but uh, no, I remember just being. A team aspect, a team oriented uh, group of girls that really, set, I think that's what set us apart. We loved each other on the court, we loved each other off the court. Again, as a young one coming in, the upperclassmen took care of me and again, did not make it a, did not make it a problem. But that's kind of rare, isn't it? For it upperclassmen rare. to just kind of take you in like that? Take yeah. the underclassmen in like that? Yeah, oh my God. You could burn this footage now. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that amazing? But it is good stuff. Ter Terpstra was saying the exact same things yeah. you were saying. Terp had the good frosted tips on there yep. too. Hey, looking you, know it was, you know it was 1999 years. when, yeah. right? <laughs> the tips. Absolutely. Well, is it, isn't that just awesome how the way you were kind of talking about your game is exactly how your high school coach talked about you, always distributing, being a team player? Yep. Again, you know, I like being involved. I like thinking other people would want to be involved at the same time. The more people happy, the better cohesiveness of the team. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the five on the court and the bench that's going to take you places. So the good camaraderie really helped in that situation. 
obviously you were on the map. We saw you were on the map in your sophomore year. You made it to D1, but when did you kind of know like, hey, this could, this could work out. Like we can kind of make a living off this. Um, truthfully, I, it would be a junior or senior season that I thought I had a life after college. Um, I never looked to say that I was going to the WNBA. I didn't know anything about European basketball uh, and the life that could be led there. Um, it was really one day at a time and enjoy the moment. And I think from the beginning, that's part of the reason why I've been as successful as I have, is I haven't looked past, I haven't wished days past, lived in the moment, tried to enjoy it to the fullest and uh, make the most of it. And then something I really wanted to know, since this has spanned pretty much your entire career, where did you get your ability to pass from? Multi-sport athlete. I love playing football. You know, you have to lead the receiver. I love playing quarterback, baseball, softball, same thing. You know, you got to be able to put the ball where somebody's going to be, not necessarily where they are at the moment. Um, and it developed at a young age. I understood it. And, you know, again, that was one of my biggest attributes is being able to keep people involved and seeing the play develop before it develops. It's, you know, a, a mismatch here. Got to be able to take advantage. And if they cut back door, it's a wide open layup. I just got to put it somewhere for her to go get it. And that's, it just, you know, progressed. And a lot of people really get into the scoring aspect, obviously. Sometimes first thing they ask, what'd you score? How many points you score? You know, and that's not always indicative of the game or your role even. And same thing for me. I don't think I came in saying, I got a score for this team. I just tried to get in where I could fit in. And, uh, you know, passing led to getting people open. The more I passed, the less a double came. So then that left me one-on-one. -on -one. And, you know, if you leave me one-on-one, -on -one, it's trouble at that point. So again, just try to capitalize as much as possible. Right, and everyone thinks of the point guard as the passer on the team, but you kind of brought a new element into it. You called yourself a point center and other point post, people. Yep. Yep, point the post. post. Point post, that's what yep. it was. That's what it was. Yep. So is that, I mean, is that something you even seen as a player when you played other teams? Were posts passing the way you were? No, I think, I mean, I don't want to say I, I created it or anything, but I, I definitely honed it for my ability. Um, I, I joke that, you know, Jokic has watched my film as a, as a young, just bring young Serbian, uh, but you know, I, I, that's a, it's how I play, you know, read, react. It's what I'm trying to instill in the girls today. You know, you can have offenses and be on train tracks, but at some point you need to break a play to make a play um, and take what the defense gives you. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys definitely left your mark here, whether it be you and the team, the whole team, just the program as a whole. You know, how did they help you develop and get you onto that next level at the University of Minnesota? Well, Spash gave me the big platform, being a Division I school, you know, playing other solid schools in the area, traveling to meet other even better schools in, in the playoff aspect. Um, so I just kind of slowly got the platform I needed to be seen. And then uh, through Spash, I picked up an AAU club, and then that broadcast me even more around the country, traveled to Florida and Virginia and some places that had high recruiting situations that uh, more eyes seen me. And, you know, that publicity also helped the team because if, you know, people are coming to watch me, they're also coming and seeing what else the team has to offer. So hopefully other people got opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, obviously you made it uh, to state your final year here, but what were some of the most memorable times you had wearing that Panther uniform? Members with the team, you know, I think wins and losses, they come and go. The only reason I know I went 26 and one my senior year is because I went 26 and oh, and that last one was a loss in the state championship game. You know, I don't remember what happened junior or sophomore year. I remember the memories of teammates and the sleepovers and the pasta parties and things like that. And again, that was the love of the game. It wasn't wins and losses. The fun in the moment, sad in the moment, but uh, the memories of sleepovers and family time was even better. Right, it seems like, you know, just talking to you about it, it seems like you're a big team, obviously you're a big teammate, Al, but like being with teammates outside of it, whether it be high school, college, the pros, it seems like you're always with your team, hanging out, having fun. Absolutely, the team is, uh, you know, your family at that point. You gotta trust each other on the court, you gotta be reliable, you gotta be, hold yourself accountable, hold your teammates accountable. You know, and things like that off the court will carry over on the court with the cohesiveness that uh, solid teams need to make playoff pushes or win um, tight games in, in crunch time. Mm -hmm. It all that adds extra, up. It all that, adds that, up. That extra chemistry can take you that far, can't it? Absolutely. The five on the court, you know, you don't necessarily always need to be best friends, but that working relationship needs to be there where you are 
all five of you are there to have the same goal. Mm -hmm. You have the same, you know, eyes on the prize at the end of the tunnel and you are out there to get it together. It's not an individual sport. It is not tennis or golf. You know, you need to show up in the five on the court. You need to go against the other five. It can't be four against five or three against five. And you mentioned that uh, state finals loss. Is that why you came back to Spash to coach? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to avenge that? Yeah, I ended on one loss. I couldn't do that, so I had to come back and get my uh, get a winning streak or something. So, I'll, uh, if we if we win state, I guess I'll have to retire on a winning streak. Hey, there we go. There we go. So you we'll re see. you return to Spash, right? Pretty much where you started with Terpstra, you know, as the head coach. You know, was that kind of a really comforting feeling? Not only coming back to where you started, but also having that familiar face that you know this guy like very well. Absolutely, it was great. You know, he's always done everything for the program. He's, you know, sacrificed personal time to put the program first and the program has benefited tremendously. So when I got a chance to work with him, I was excited for the opportunity, jumped at it, said yes instantly. And, uh, you know, it just so happened that he decided to uh, walk away and retire with me here as the first year uh, JV coach. And of course, I, again, jumped at the opportunity to take over for him. You know, he built the story program and I had uh, visions of keeping it going. Yeah. You're a storied player. No, yes. no better way to pass the baton. So what, there was no hesitation in taking this no, position. No, zero hesitation. Couldn't wait for him to get out the door. I pushed him out the door, actually. And then first year, right where you got, right, right where the team left you. You're a top, co-top uh, Valley Conference, and you got these girls absolutely playing. So what did, you know, you played for all the coaches, whether it be Pam at the University of Minnesota, Terpstra here, Cheryl Reeve. You know, what are you bringing from, and then abroad as well? What have you taken from all this experience and brought it to Stevens Point? Well, exactly that. I took every single thing that I've learned through the years that was positive or beneficial for me and tried to approach this season and give the girls that. I thought everything negative that a coach has ever done, spoke to me, played me, you know, things like that, and said I wouldn't do those things. Um, and then on top of it, took the basketball aspect and threw it at the girls with the kitchen sink. You know, I, I gave them everything under the sun and said, uh, give it time, buy in, good things will happen. You know, started 0-4, a little rough, thought maybe, you know, it was too advanced for the girls, but it just took time. You know, they, the cohesion wasn't there and uh, their, their understanding, overall understanding wasn't there, but they stuck with it, stayed the course, and I couldn't be more proud of, more proud of the hard work they put in to uh, have the season they're having. Mm -hmm. Again, I just point the finger, I'll, that's all I do. The girls are the ones putting in the work, you know, in the grind, game time, games on the line, mm -hmm. you know, leaving it all out there. So again, it's all them. I'm happy to be a part of it. For sure. And then, you know, when you came to graduate through SPASH, you know, I'm assuming this was, you know, where you walked down the aisle to grab that diploma. Did you think you'd be in the same exact place 20 years later coaching this team? Not at all. You know, I think, uh, honestly, I didn't know where basketball would take me. Um, I had to love the game. But ultimately, to say I would be back here coaching or even have the knowledge to be able to impart on, the, on these young, young women, no, I never, never thought that far ahead. One day at a time, that's what was so good about it. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned that first four <laughs> losses of the season. You won the next 17 out of 20. Did you th was there any doubts that, hey, you know, this may be too advanced or let's give it time. These girls, are to, once they pick up on it, we'll be rolling. I thought it was a little too advanced for them, but again, I told them stay the course, believe, be patient. Uh, they did a great job, took the losses, you know, with uh, with dignity, and you know, heard a few things from me about how to approach the next game or how do you bounce back from a loss or even a 20, 30, 40 point loss like some of them were. We were playing good teams, you know, that's on top of it. So can't take anything away from the teams that we played. They did what they needed to do to beat us. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a learning curve, learning process. The girls needed to get out, make mistakes, learn, grow, and uh, hopefully not make those mistakes again. Right, I'm sure it was a lot different for you, you know, being the coach instead of the player. I don't know if I took it down a notch. I, I try to I hold like the that. girls to a high accountability, you know. That's you what know, wins games. It is, you know, and again, I'm, it's, it's basketball, but it's more than basketball. I'm trying to put them in pressure situations to handle certain crunch time moments. You need team chemistry. You need to be able to communicate in the heat of the moment with your teammate to figure out what went wrong, how to fix it, and it has to happen on the fly because I can't always call timeouts. The game doesn't stop. Um, and again, your boss after basketball is gonna put pressure on you to have deadlines finished and just anything. Office camaraderie, uh, teamwork, team building skills, 
all of it comes down to sports helps develop that for the future. So putting them in tough situations now is only preparing them for basketball and outside of basketball as well. Yeah. You put them in a great situation. You guys are co-conference champs heading into your first year as a playoff head coach. So how are you approaching that? Same way as always. The next game is the most important game of the season. We don't look past anybody. Uh, come, in, come in, check in, put your work in, give everything you got in the moments that you're on the court with your team and uh, compete, challenge each other, and really never compare. Just focus on yourself, keep your eye on your own bobber, do the work. So you got, obviously you got your jersey retired here at SPASH. You got your jersey retired at the University of Minnesota. You've accomplished so much as well as a WNBA champion. And now you're back where it all started. Does, do you ever think about everything that you've been through since you've stepped on this court as a player and where you are now and just how crazy that is that you've been to different countries, champion, all this stuff? I think about it all the time. I mean, I try to impart some of it to the girls, telling them, you know, you don't know what's, where basketball is going to take you. You don't know what's next. So in, in, in the moment, do your best, enjoy it, good things will come. Uh, for me, like I said, I never thought basketball would carry me across the world. I did not think I would have multiple friendships with people in multiple different countries across the globe, uh, learn different languages through needing to survive while living in certain countries. Um, had to pick up some Russian. I had a driver, so I had to speak with my driver, so I had to learn Russian. I uh, spent five years in Sweden, learned the language, communicated. I coached in Sweden for five years. So again, I have to be able to communicate with people. It's just, it was different. So the basketball opened so many doors and no, I never thought I would be here. I hope the girls understand what is out there and uh, the possibilities that they have. Yeah, now, high school Janelle probably had no idea she'd be speaking four different languages at one point. Zero idea. <laughs> Nor did I think I would play around the world for Team USA and in China and just, you know, the most random things out there I experienced and basketball was uh, catalyst. It was crazy. It's still crazy. It's mind blowing, honestly, how far basketball has taken me. Mm -hmm. How much do you just love the game? Love it. I mean, in the WNBA, it becomes a job. You know, you are a horse and you got to work and you are running until you can't run no more. Um, so in some aspects, the longer you go, the more toll it takes on mind, body and soul. So even now with the girls, I kind of I try to check in as much as possible, see if everything's good. I understand, you know, I got 12 individuals who all have emotions and feelings. Playing time is hard to get, you know, and I'm doing my best to rotate. But of course, emotions get mixed in and people are, you know, got to talk about things. So try to uh, be as grounded and keep people on, on the same page as much as possible. It's tough, you know, uh, more, more, more talented coaches are needed. I think it's a hard job. It's very time consuming. You have to want to do it. Um, but it is so rewarding when you see the progress. I, like I said, I'm, I'm overjoyed and proud of the girls. We're not content, not complacent, but where we are at in year one is uh, maybe a little bit further than I thought we would be, but beyond proud of the situation. Can't be mad, and you have a young I am team. not mad. Awesome. Young team, one senior, starting a freshman, two sophomores, junior and senior, so, you know, we'll be, we'll be around for a while with it, and uh, ceiling's the limit with the squad. I think really they is. have a good grasp as what I want, now it's time to raise the level for uh, the end of the season and into next year. I'll, I'll go back to that, uh, the University of Minnesota. You were the co-Wisconsin Player of the Year, and obviously there's many other schools out there, high tier schools, but you chose Minnesota. Like, why Minnesota when you got your Tennessees, Dukes, everything else out there? <laughs> well, as good as I am now, I was not that good then, so, Duke, Tennessee, and all those high-ranking schools were not even interested in me. The only teams that were interested in me were Minnesota, Green Bay, uh, maybe a little bit of Marquette, and some smaller, you know, Division I schools. I wasn't really heavily recruited, so the thing that got me to Minnesota was the fact that they wanted me. They had one scholarship, and they said, it's yours if you want it. Now, okay, that's pretty big. And again, like I said, the distance from home away was perfect enough. Mom and Dad couldn't show up randomly, yet if I wanted them there, they were there. So... That's how that worked. And you missed, and I'm going to make it. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, the, so you get to Minnesota, and you got someone there by the name of Lindsey Whalen became a gopher legend along with yep. yourself. 
Uh, did you ever talk to her before you know you became a gopher or how did that relationship develop over time because it seems like you know she was here just now yep you guys are pretty tight absolutely um, we weren't the best of friends when we first got there but uh, we developed to be friends pretty quick mine comes right back to me that's how that works um, <laughs> we developed instantly we had great chemistry from the bat. Uh, she did not really pressure me to come or say good things would happen. I just could tell she was a, a talented individual and I wanted to play with her. Oh, mine awesome. went in again. That's awesome. You can just tell when it. And then how, how, what was that dynamic like on the court with you and Lindsay? Obviously you had such a stacked team as time developed, but where did that chemistry come from? Cause you guys, like you said, weren't great Lindsay's freshman year and then you come into the picture. It was just playing, pick up three on three, five on five in the in in preseason, off season things like that before the uh, before we actually got into it, and it grew. I mean, it was we both loved the game, we both had a high IQ of understanding how to get other people involved and what we needed to do ourselves. So going against each other, it was you know this, but together, I mean, it was like reading a book. I mean, it was it was laid out right there for you. I could see what she was going to do. I could see what she wanted to do. And then the, co uh, the cohesiveness just grew and grew and grew and to the point where, I mean, it was all nonverbals of, yeah, this, this, or yeah, you know, like that. Duke game, caught it right here. She cuts back door, you know, don't even look and drop it right there. Again, it's just with time, just playing, learning, understanding each other. The cohesiveness is great. Right, and you can definitely see it progress over that time because, you know, you made it to, I believe, it was sec the second round your first two years. And then third year is when you guys go off all yep. the way to the final four as a seven seed. Yep. So kind of just tell me about that season as a whole. What really clicked, especially once that tournament started? Well, after you throw up this brick, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> time. It, uh, it was a culmination of three years being together. Again, we had the squad together for quite some time. So the cohesion was there. And maybe we're a little slighted by the seven seed, thinking we're better than that. Uh, we had the first two, first two games at home, and in our mind, it did not matter who we were playing. They were coming into Williams Arena, and they were walking out with a loss. It was that simple. I mean, we were hyped from the beginning. Waylon had just come off uh, breaking her hand, so she was just back into the lineup. And I mean, we were clicking on all cylinders because we had played five or six games without her. So then you throw in this All-American, then again, barbecue chicken. Yeah, absolute barbecue chicken. Barbecue chicken. So you guys, you know, run train for, through the first few matchups, and you find yourself playing against Duke, against a co-Wisconsin player of the year, yep. Misty Bass. So yep. kind of tell me about that game, because you absolutely went off. Yep. Well, like I said, uh, back in high school, that was the only game I lost my senior year. Give it to Misty and her team. They did a great job trying to contain me. They didn't really. They just got the win. And then, yeah, we go to uh, to the Final Four, or to the Elite Eight to play Duke. And I was ready for that game because, again, the memory of losing that championship game was still fresh. And I was ready to ready for the stage. Um, Waylon was a great hype man, really good friend of mine. Great hype man. She always you know, tells you you're the best, even if you're not. So she hyped me and go get every rebound and give me the ball and we'll be good. So. Again, the cohesion we had, perfect. Couldn't ask for anything more. Seven blocks, like you said, you already gave me my stat line. I, I don't remember my stat lines, so it's nice to hear, but yeah, it, the Elite Eight run was awesome. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And you guys beat Duke, one of the top schools in the nation. What was that locker room like after? Were you guys playing 50 Cent or were you playing Crimea River by Justin Timberlake? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, I don't actually think we made it to the locker room. I, uh, Coach Pam was, she told us if we won, she was gonna. She wanted a, a celebration, so we were excited about that. So we talked about a water cooler over the top. Yep. Um, we never made it to the locker room. We got the water cooler. I think I held her in the corner. They wouldn't let us celebrate on the court because they didn't want us to dump the water on the court. So we went about six inches off the court and then dumped water on her. Uh, and then it was a party on the court. We don't even think we made it to the locker room, hotel, celebration. I mean, we lived in the moment for that. Uh, mm -hmm that time because again you don't know if it's going to happen again got to enjoy the moment and I think that was one of the big highlights before the final four for us definitely oh then you get to the final four and you get UConn that was a championship game in our mind 
We mm -hmm. thought we were to beat Tennessee if we played Tennessee. Uh, we thought UConn was the best team. We thought we were the next best team. Um, we gave them a good run. Me and Waylon talked about it last night. We thought, you know, a couple, couple plays here or there could have went our way. You know, we, we fought hard. But uh, to be in the names of Diane Taurasi and great players from UConn and even competing, having a chance to put Minnesota on the map in the Final Four, can't be, can't be mad about it. Certainly. And then I was just going to mention Diane Taurasi, maybe the best at this point, the best women's basketball player of all time. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously she's a college player at that time, but you and her went absolutely blow for blow. She had 18 points, you had 18 points. She had six rebounds, you had seven. You She's had not as good as me. It's all that offensive is. rebound. Yeah. You had four steals, she had three blocks. Not as, oh, okay. What do you remember from that game and how tenacious she was and how were you able to match exactly that of one of the best we've ever seen? Play by play, you know. Don't, uh, don't look at it as a whole. Enjoy the moment, give the best each play. Don't get too high, don't get too low. Um, I saw how good of a leader she was, how she manifested what she wanted to happen. I mean, she dictated everything. And from that point on, I think it, I took more understanding that maybe I needed to do that on my end with my team. Um, college might've been a little too late for me to be able to do that, but going forward into the pros, I took that lesson from her and you know became more of a leader, more of a vocal leader, more of a lead by example aspect and you know, I, whether you know or not, I played with her overseas. We ended up winning a European title when we played together in Russia. Awesome. And then you, so wrap up, buckets. <laughs> wrapping up the University of Minnesota, Williams Arena. What, what was some of your most fond memories there? And you know, how, how was that such a great place for you specifically to be? 100% the atmosphere. Uh, Williams is unlike any other arena in the U.S. How about that raised floor? The raised floor. Everything. You are on a stage. You are the show. Everybody is. <laughs> it's cool. Everybody is there, you know, to watch you. You are the show. So uh, we took that as it's our time to shine. Um, I wouldn't trade it. I don't think anybody should touch the raised floor. Yes, you can amend it. You can, you know, polish it and clean it up real nice. You can renovate the barn, but you know, if you uh, build something new, it's just not going to be the barn. So. Right. I know they got talks on everything up there about that, so hopefully this, this trickles up there that the barn is the barn and some renovations are okay and that floor needs to stay raised. Yep. It's not a safety concern. You need to learn to uh, deal with it. And this is how uh, it is. It, it this is, is what it is. Been. It is what it is. So you finish up college, get to the pros, number one overall pick. Did you, how were you even able to process that as a, as a Custer, Wisconsin gal? It was a whirlwind. Um, Again, being in New York, it's just different lifestyle, faster pace. You don't know if you're going to be number one. I was flying around the country interviewing with the, all the top teams. Uh, after my interviews, I thought I would be the number one pick, to be honest, just because I nailed it. Uh, a little confident about the situation, which is okay. Confident, not cocky. As she and, uh, Oh, yeah. And uh, again, it was an experience you can't replicate. I had my family with me, mom and dad right there. Mm -hmm. Name gets called, you know, it's everybody's name. McCarville's joint, all the people at home. So I was very proud that it happened. I, uh, I was able to put Custer on the map, uh, Stevens Point, Wisconsin for that matter. And it's something that people can't take away from you. It's the number one pick. You're going to be the number one pick forever. So yeah, uh, it was great. Funny story about that, Bill Walton, we, or not Bill Walton, uh, Bill Lambeer told me I was the worst number one pick in the history of the WNBA. <laughs> I'm still the number one pick, Bill. Buckets. You can say that. Yeah. Then he recruited me and wanted me to come play in New York for him, and I told him no, and that's when I got traded to Minnesota. Yep, yep, obviously. <laughs> but something that you know a lot of people, a lot of casual basketball fans don't know about the WNBA is that you play your season, but in the off season, you guys go to all these different countries, European, Russia, all these places mm -hmm. to go play basketball. You know, kind of explain why you know so many WNBA players had to do that. First of all, or chose. First of all, money. Uh, WNBA did not pay very well. I was the number one pick, and I made forty-four thousand dollars for four years. Um, each year, I got a thousand dollar raise, which was not much, and it wasn't enough. Then, on top of it, you got to stay in shape. You got to be able to continue to train. Playing in Europe or China gave you that opportunity to continue to train at a high level while playing and stay sharp. So WNBA 
semi encouraged you to go, wasn't forced, but uh, it, it just created more opportunities. And like I said, the money aspect of it was a lot bigger. WNBA was, you know, like I said, 40, 44,000. As an number one pick, you can go overseas and you dictate your contract. Um, not me personally at that point, but like Diana made over a million playing one season. Maya Moore played in China for three months and made over a million. You know, so Europe and Asia were the places to go in order to secure a bag, as the kids say these days. Right, securing the bag. I secured a couple bags in my day. So it's got you here. <laughs> Then, then all of a sudden you find yourself, you know, you make it to the conference finals with the Liberty and then, you know, you find That's your... when Bill told me I was the worst number one pick because he was After with that, Detroit. He was, he was, I was going to say, he, he was, was the bad was, boy. Yep, he was still with Detroit at that time. Yep. That's awesome. And then you find yourself in Minnesota with a great mix of young, young gals such as Maya Moore and you have your older vets with Simone Augustus and Reuniting with Lindsey Whalen, you know, how cool was that for you personally? Easy decision for me to make to go to, uh, to get traded to go to Minnesota. Bank. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, easy decision to go to Minnesota. Whalen and me obviously go way back. Uh, the chance to reunite on the court was a once in a lifetime opportunity. You had to jump at it. When we get there, you know, they had won the year before, two years before, mm -hmm. lost in 12, 2012, and then I was coming in in 2013. You know, and again, everybody there, the only thing you're there for is to win a championship. You know, at that level, uh, the highest level possible in the world, the only thing you're there for is to win a championship. So every day it was championship talk, every day it was championship level. Um, and then, I mean, we breezed through the season, not saying we, we breezed through the season, <laughs> took the championship it was everything you wanted it to be and I mean everybody's like we got to get back to work we got to do it again you know like that was the mindset so it wasn't get in do the job and celebrate it was get in do the job and then plan to do the job all over again yeah, do it again yep and that was kind of you know nearing the end of your career so how you know how do you kind of deal with that as a player play for so long and knowing like the end is kind of coming here well it's tough Players usually want to go out on their own terms. You never want to go out on an injury. Uh, unfortunately, I was injured my last year with Minnesota, and we lost the championship uh, to LA, and that, that took its toll on me. Um, mind, body, and soul was hurting at that point. So I was ready to step away, but then that's when I ended up going to Sweden, played for another five years in Sweden, enjoyed it, started coaching, more mentoring, you know, learning, things like that. Uh, and then again, the game, I fell back in love with the game, not having to be in the grind of the WNBA. And then ultimately, bad back, bad body, got to step away at some point. So then I said, okay, I've already put my foot in the door for coaching and came here. And that's when Craig asked me if I'd be interested in the JV job. So it just kind of fell in line as, uh, as it should. Could you imagine anything being more just full circle? Literally full circle. You started here, you travel all the way around the world, and end up right back where you started. Yeah, it's perfect. I mean, it's storybook ending. Storybook start, storybook ending. Hopefully, uh, we're able to do something with Spash in the playoffs. You know, I have a state runner-up banner hanging. There's one state championship in Spash's history. So ultimately, you know, the goal is to win when you play. Yes, you want to have fun, but ultimately you want to win too. So hopefully the girls are getting that grasp and you know becoming better and more competing competitors in practice uh, to raise the level. And again, the more we raise the level, the ones coming up are going to have to match it, and that's how you build you build uh, the culture. Mm -hmm. And then how exciting is it, you know, kind of wrap up your basketball career, but start a new career in the same sport, doing what you love. In my hometown. In your that hometown. was one of the biggest things for me is uh, I've been away for so long. Uh, unfortunately, my mother passed while I was overseas and spending so many times or so much time away from home. I didn't want that to happen with my father. So I took it upon myself to say, okay, you know, I have jobs overseas. I could be making more money as a head coach in Europe right now, but I've been gone for so long that I wanted to be here. So right now, I'm not looking to go anywhere else. I've told the athletic director here that I want to be here and, you know, expect me to be here for a while. Doesn't mean I'll be here forever, but in this moment, I don't want to be anywhere else. And I think, uh, I hope, I hope the girls understand that, and that's going to give them or give me their best as well because they want to play for me. Yeah. Buckets. Oh no! 
<laughs> oh. 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 I want it to be on record that I'm in boots still dominating yeah, you, we Austin. Yeah, we got her in boots. We got I'm her in boots. boots. I, I'm no getting, fur, just I'm boots. I'm getting cooked. I thought I had, it. I thought <laughs> I had a chance. A slight chance. Slight chance. And I'm but, shooting with a men's ball. But that's okay. I, I thought. I thought. I was on to something. A I for effort. A for effort. <laughs> but I got to say, you know, everyone here, not only for just the school, but the whole community, they're, they're happy you're back. They're glad that you're back where it all started. It's been an honor talking to you today, Janelle. This has been fantastic. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad you got to come out. I know you said you're a Minnesota fan, back watching the Lynx. So really glad to do the interview. All publicity in women's basketball, girls yep. basketball is great. So happy to be a part of it. Can I hit the three? I don't know. Money. Oh!